my title, this is perfectly with the title. title. The title is Connections Between China and Turkey. What connections? First, it's landmass connections. So I will give you a slide view, slideshow to show you from here to here. That's connections. So totally consistent with, with, with the title. So I'm not tricking you or cheating. So I presume people who will come to this place need not show need not a very clear or detailed map. So you have an idea of the connections, but this you can say this is really just the, the, the most important part of the the, the Eurasian landmass, if you will. Nonetheless, we'll see. I don't know whether this. Uh, Osman Digo by two. I think you, several of you, may not know this, these work characters very well. But this is Osman Osman Empire, Ottoman Empire as its worst in 1924 or 23, and then at its best is about 1556, 1550, yeah, 1556. That's when the when Sultan uh, Soleiman Sultan passed away. And that's China in Qing Dynasty. So I'm going to give you a slideshow of the land that connect these two pieces of land. All right. What well, the land? There are many ways to choose, but I will show you where I have traveled. That's the slideshow. First, uh, Briatia, Russia. That is where the Huns, the Turks, and the Mongols originated, around the Bakal Lake. The Lake Bakal is the, the, the lake, the world's largest lake in terms of volume water held in the lake. It is not the largest in terms of the area, area but it's deep. Okay, I cannot go on with this. For, with 240 slides, I have to <coughs> I pre-calculated before coming here, I think if I spend 15 seconds per slide, I'll be all right. All right, if I'm, so this is, it's a Mongol area, they, this is a, a, a dialect of the Mongol, of the uh, official Mongol language, but this is nonetheless, it's a, they mostly, most of the local people, the Mongols are uh, adherents of Tibetan Buddhism. That's the city. It's been a Russian city for a long time. Uh, this is the city look. You can see the mixed mixture of facial features in the city. Uh, this is the lake. I have to put my feet in the lake because I know uh, when I was young, I learned the song Su Wu Mu Yang Bei Hai Bian. Bei Hai is Bakal Lake. Su Wu was here for 18 years. I was here for maybe 18 minutes. No, not <laughs> even 18 minutes. 18 seconds in, in this. This is a uh, Buryat family. The man's mother is Polish. His father is a Mongol, as a professor of history, and who married a uh, Polish lady. But he was born in Grace, uh, grew up here, and that's the family. Uh, this is the family that took me there. So we go now to the Republic of Mongolia. This is Genghis Khan. Very tall building. Inside is a museum. Uh, this is how I handle the hunting falcons. <laughs> falcons are pretty heavy. You see, I, I was using left one arm to support the other arm. I wasn't strong enough, especially if you moves and but that's the a temple the uh, official Mongolian language that's used in inner Mongolia in ultra Mongolia in, like here in the Republic of Mongolia it is not the official language even though more and more people tend to use this now uh, more and people, more people want to use this thank you That's a mixture of the old and the new. Ulaanbaatar is like that. Ulaanbaatar is a 
a modernizing city but with chaos. Like many modernizing cities in the world, I have been to Mexico City, I've been to Buenos Aires, uh, I've been to Mexican City, uh, and Beijing for sure. That's another view of the city. Uh, I quite like the city, but it's chaotic. Hami, <laughs> Xinjiang. I'm going to go to Xinjiang because now Mon Mongolia, and then Xinjiang, and then west, uh, west of Xinjiang, and then we'll somehow, if we just keep on going, uh, some people 1,000 years ago, uh, 1,400 years ago tried it, then you will end up in Turkey. I'm sure you guys know that it's possible to, to, to get to Turkey. What is this? What's the matter? Amigua. <laughs> That's right. Amigua. Amigua, in fact, is, grows better in Shanshan, Shanshan than, than Hami. But Hami is the place where it's gathered and shipped uh, in, inland. So this is known as Amigua. This, uh, the last, it, this is a museum of the Hami Palace, the last Mongol uh, Khan. The last Mongol Khan. Uh, who, uh, who was uh, forced to get out of the palace in, in 1931. So the previous one was the uh, Han, Han of Bukhara, 1920, after the First World War. So these are the Mongols who control the area since the, uh, since the 13th century. And this is a local uh, Uyghur lady. I, w I, know, I know her I know her nephew, and her nephew introduced me, so I was eating dinner in her home. Uh, this is a, a few ladies. You can, from the face, you can probably tell one is a Uyghur lady, and the other two are Han ladies in Han. Yeah. So, but I must say, many Uyghurs drink wine, so they they had some wine. That's why they, they were very happy. Is it vodka? Is it vodka? I, no, no, it's Chinese liquor for after meal. This is after a meal. We had a meal, maybe six or seven or eight people. Uh, this is uh, the Silk Road that Xuanzang, the Chinese monk in the sixth, sixth century, uh, followed. Xuanzang was a contemporary of Prophet Muhammad. Well, they, their life overlapped several, maybe several decades. Turfan. Tulufan is a Chinese word. Turpan. T U R P A N. Usually it's spelled that way. And this is where the Dai Shu was from. I mentioned, I specifically want to spend a few minutes here. These are called Toharians. Toharians were a, spoke a Western Indo European language. Similar to Greek. Latin, even Gaelic, uh, so even Irish. This similar to in Hindu, or this similar to Iranians. They, according to the best evidence that we have, they probably came from Anatolia. So this is Anatolia center, I have to say. So they came from Anatolia. Uh, therefore, their language was very similar to the Hittite language. Hittite is in today was in today's Turkey in Ankara in the central Anatolia. So, th their gods were also similar. They were in China four thousand in China in this area four thousand years ago. It was they probably who brought the uh, wheat into China. The original native indigenous agriculture in China does started about maybe 10,000 years ago, was uh, millet, it's, it's Xiaomi, millet. Wheat was brought back, <coughs> brought here, here. Because now the, uh, with the DNA, people can go back to the same site and check the DNAs and so forth. So now, biological ar archaeology is uh, very much in vogue, and the Chinese archaeologists have been able to find uh, in their things. This is me in Hami. I'm a with some uh, 
I normally go to people of my same age, same gender. I will not risk being a uh, harassment, and <laughs> so I always get success. But if I go to younger age and opposite gender, I may have trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is Tufan, a mosque you can see easily. This is the famous uh, near the near the grapevine near where the grapes were are grown. And this is a very good Tufan Bouguan and it, the contents are quite good and the dialoguing and so forth are quite good. Ulumuchi Ulumuchi was uh, a long time ago was center on the Silk Road, and also a long time ago was the, uh, near, the near Murumuchi was the court, of the court of several of the nomadic vampires. Um, this is an aerial view from an airplane. Um, this is uh, my wife. <laughs> so I didn't take a picture at random on the street. This is my wife, <laughs> or near the bazaar. <laughs> She was quite willing to be. Uh, I was attending a conference. I, I gave a talk, and that's why she came. And this is near the Tianchi, near Wulumuchi, the Tianchi. Ah, you will know this in Wulumuchi. No, they have. I didn't buy anything. Uh, I noticed at the shop. Do you know the penny? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know the brand name. Haman. Is it? Damat. Uh, uh, Damat. Damat is the brand name. Haman is the, the shop's name. The shop's name. name. Okay. Here is another view of Rumuchi. And they sell jade. Uh, now, I've been to Xinjiang eight times. I've been to almost mm -hmm. everywhere in Xinjiang. I just show you some pictures of Kucha. Kucha is used to be called Xiu uh, The Chinese Western, the Chinese music, when they say Xi Yue, mostly comes, it came from Xiu during the Tang Dynasty. And Xiu also is a, a center. There was a place where the uh, uh, Mahayana Buddhism was centered. And later on, Tang Dynasty had its garrison in Xiu uh, for 150 years, the Tang Dynasty's westernmost commander, uh, military commander, lived in Chuzi. Uh, this is a lady who played Pipa, which came from the west, under the statute of uh, Kumi Rajava, who was the translator of the Buddhist strip scriptures. <coughs> Underneath a Kizil, uh, what is it called? Caves, not grottles. Grottles. You see, I learned these words sometimes in English, sometimes in Chinese. So I, grottles. But these grottles are early Buddhist paintings. They're still maintained fairly in good life. And he was the first translator of the that's it. <coughs> and a country view, quite scenic. And that's also the dormitories of some place in the city, a modern part of the city. And this is an old old temple that was there. And Komarajiva was once the abbot of this temple. Kumarajiva was born in India. Uh, no, he was born in Central Asia, but he was off. His father was a, a Indian noble who got exiled, or who exiled himself, and married the sister of the ruler of Chuzi. And so he was a little one, and he was sent to India to learn Buddhism. His mother was a devout Buddhist. This is a, this is a, one of the Feng Shui. It's a, the the Great Wall, in fact, extended all the way to Chuzi in the Han period and, and Jin period. T today, the Great Wall in China ended in Jiayuguan because Ming Dynasty's reach could only go to Jiayuguan. So they couldn't repair the old uh, Great Walls. 
the Great Walls, in fact, extended fa much farther than Jiayuquan in the older times. This is a Jin Dynasty Fengshui, uh, near near Chuzhou. Uh, Hetian, Hetian is also called Yukan. Uh, this is a this is a good story. He is a uh, donkey cart driver, and this is a um, old relic, Buddhist uh, relic. We a group of us went to the town, and I was interested in visiting this archaeology place, but it's in the, deep in the desert. So most people were spending their time in the town. I hired this with the help of a local person, hired this driver to go in the desert. And we, we took us a whole morning and <coughs> go back. And when I got in the town, because we pre-arranged that after lunch we'll meet, I saw my comrades, so I was very happy. I talked with them and I forgot to, that I didn't pay this guy. <laughs> it was 30 RMB only. This is maybe 12 years ago. 30 RMB only. But I didn't pay him. By the time I looked, he disappeared. He, I guess he felt, oh, this guy didn't want to pay me. Okay, let him, let him go. He disappeared. So I had to find the person who introduced me to him to say, how can I pay him? Shall I pay you and later on you pay him? Then this, this guy who worked for a local museum, it's a person who worked at the museum. After around and found out his name, his home. So I went to his home and paid him and saw his home. So were you riding a donkey? <coughs> yes. There? Not riding a donkey cart. Oh, I see. A donkey was pulling a small cart. Uh, I see. He was on one side, I was on the other side. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's also a hut here. Uh, that's, you see, three kinds of new modes of transportation I, I don't have time. A donkey, a camel, and an automobile. <laughs> right? So shall I skip this and go to the rambling talk or you want to see, still see this? We still want to see. You have a laser, have a laser function. function. Oh, I see, I forgot. It's easier for you and more convenient. Can you explain to me? Yes, 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 yes. I'm not modern enough. <laughs> okay, this uh, why is that like? Uh, I think of all the Turkic speaking groups today, only the Uyghurs still use the Arabic uh, letters, al 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 Arabic alphabet with some modification to express their languages. In 1967 or 68, the Chinese language, the, the, the State Council's language reforming group had actually translated all this into Latin alphabet. Just like at the same time, they sim further sim simplified the Hanzi, uh, the second batch of simplifications. But after the Cultural Revolution, those simplified characters of Hanzi were abolished. And at the same time, the local base and local molas also opposed to changing the la to la Latin alphabet. So this remained. They actually, for eight years, children were learning the Latin alphabet in terms of Uyghur. But after 18 year, eight, eight years, it was resumed. So now this is the only group in the world that is still used. Okay. With great effort, we can see it. It's not Kashi is the Pearl of the Silk Road, it was repeated. And this is 1987. Two young tourists, two younger, not two young tourists, two younger tourists was in front in front of the uh, mausoleum of the Apak Hoja. Apak Hoja. The Apak Hoja is the great, great is the grandfather of Xiang Fei. And at that time the rulers were mixed local rulers with Mongol, Mongol descent and the religious uh, and the religious leaders they were all under a group of uh, holy men or hojas from in Central Asia, from Uzbekistan. They were Naqshbandi. I'm talking about a, a rambling talk. Is that okay? Is that allowable to? They're from Naqshbandi. And then later on, for different reasons, for political reasons, one representing the 
the, the base, other rep representative religious people, they are called White Mountain type and group and Black Mountain group. And they fought and Qing Dynasty went in and finished both of them and controlled them. This is Qianlong in 1759, I think. So this is a memor commemoration of the grandfather of, uh, of one of the White Mountain families and his great uh, granddaughter went to become Qianlong's concubine. Uh, this is in Hashi, and that, of course, obviously a little merchant selling things, 1987. Today I have a toothache. Yes, this whole week I have a toothache. This is why I show you the next two slides. This is a, tooth, this is a dent, dentistry clinic in Hashi. <coughs> You can see the Chinese characters also. Xiang Ya So. So, Xiang Ya. Not not dental implant. Xiang Ya is to 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 a two for teeth. Yeah. To put a little piece of gold to 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 pull to 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 fill the cavity. That's called Xiang Ya. Looks like a fillet. Yeah, fillet. Yeah, that's the Xiang Ya. To fill the cavity with, uh, usually with, with gold color. People at, at that time they like to smile with gold. Uh, <laughs> show, not porcelain. Okay, this is 1987. I want to show you the next one because in 19, uh, I don't know, 2008, I went there again. A better one, <laughs> dentistry. But what I really want to show you is beautiful buildings, uh, 18th century, uh, Central Asian type buildings. Uh, that's the uh, you found a train station. That's the main mosque in Kashi. Uh, these are the carpet workers. Okay, they, they worked on carpets, silk carpets. Ili, Ili is north of uh, Tianshan. Kashi is it's just exactly south of Tianshan. They're not far apart. But Tianshan is, Xinjiang is like this. Xinjiang has Altai in the here, uh, Kunlun is here. In the middle is Tianshan. So Xinjiang is divided into north and north south by Tianshan. Uh, this group is not not Uyghur, nor these are Xipo, Xipo, Xipo Zhu were a cousin of the Manchus. They spoke a dialect of Manchus, and they were related to Manchus. They are not part of the eight uh, banners. They were not part of the eight banners, but they were sent to this after Qianlong conquered Xinjiang. After Qianlong conquered Xinjiang, he wanted to send some of his own soldiers here. So he talked to Xi Bo and said, I'll send you to for a rotation. They say, rotation, how long will the rotation be? He says, three years. That's 1759. They haven't been rotated back yet. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so this is Xi Bo zone. You can see this is. Typical man. This is Manchu, Manchu dialect words, and uh, in there are still about twenty-five thousand Xibo in in Xinjiang, but the most of them don't speak Xibo anymore. Yet, for China, <coughs> most of the people who now study in the uh, national archives, the the, the Qing archives, are Xibo, because in proportionally there are still more Xibo who know this language. Who can read? Who can read this language? Than the 19 million who lived in other parts of China. Theoretically, there are 19 million Manchus in China. Only 50 can speak the language. Only 100 can read the documents. I'm one of the. I am half Manchu myself. Uh, so I don't know anything <laughs> about this. I know. I even know the Arabic alphabet, but I don't know this one. Uh, this is something that everybody, every person of a Turkic background is. This is Hao Yun, Shi Ren. They somehow mysteriously or for mystery for unknown reasons, along the route of the Turkic migration, there are often these carved faces. We don't know whether it's for worship or it's for landmark or it's for anything. But this shows the original facial feature of the Huns and Turks. But 
they started in Lake Bacal with one facial feature. By the time they go to, they got to, when we migrate to the west, when they got to the Bosphorus, people's facial feature changed, uh, as, as is evidenced in this room. This is the border between China and Kazakhstan. Okay. Uh, this is exactly Horgos, Horgos, Horgos. So this is the, la the, the, the line, and now they they have a joint. Uh, each country has taken out five five uh, square kilometers, and they will join into a technology part or some uh, custom common customs. Uh, this is nor north uh, north Xinjiang. Roughly speaking, North Xinjiang is more grassland, more steppe. South Xinjiang is more agricultural, more sedentary people, and more no nomadic people. The Hassaks, most of the Hassaks live in North Xinjiang. Well, we were uh, South Xinjiang, we were a force. We were, of course, are everywhere, but uh, in South Xinjiang, near the desert, in the, in the oasis, mostly the, the residents were Uyghurs. This is the calligraphy of this Manchu language, not Han language. So he's one of the Shibo uh, who still can know the, not only know the Manchu language, the Manchu script, but can also do a calligraphy on it. Altai, Altai is Altai, it's north, near near mm -hmm. Russia, near Mongolia. And then there is a beautiful lake, Lake Kanas. Lake Kanas is near the lake. Uh, China Telecom near near the lake. Uh, this is a Tuva. Tuva is a Turkic small group of people in Russia. There is even tu uh, Tuva Autonomous Republic. Tuva li lifestyle, even clothing, and also their uh, language is very much influenced by the Mongols. Yet the Mongols originally, of course, they took something from the Turks also. So this is a tuba. He was playing an in instrument with, with uh, two different melodies going on at the same time. A little like the, the fugue in, in uh, bar Baroque, Western Baroque music. In one reed, one tongue, one... He can play two tunes simultaneously. <coughs> well, this is Xinjiang. The, the river changes color for different hours of the day. Now we cross the border to Kazakhstan. Almighty used to be the capital of Kazakhstan. Am I off my topic? Am I still on my topic? You still are willing to listen to this. All right. This is where I stayed. <laughs> I stayed in a three-star hotel. Clearly, it says three star. It doesn't teach teach you. It's just uh, deserves three stars. No more and no less. Uh, this is a five star hotel. I ate a uh, ice cream and a coffee there. I took a picture, but I didn't stay there. I also travel often by myself, and I usually go to three to four stars. I never go to five stars because the swimming pool and the, and the fitness centers don't really fit my needs. And uh, the, the price usually don't fit my budget either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here it is in Amati. There's some little market. Here is something that you can tell. Many of, this is a Russian and Chinese. That's the Chinese Merchants Association. So obviously, Amati was not a uh, Russian territory until 1858. It was in 1858 or in 1859 that Almaty was ceded along with a big, big chunk of land to Russia by Qing, by China. This is Tianshan. You can see Tianshan from Almaty, the former capital of Kazakhstan, and all, all, also you can see it from Bishkek, the capital of Kyrgyzstan. Astana. Astana means the capital. Astana is a new capital in the north, not quite the extreme north, but in the north compared to Almaty of Kazakhstan. And Kazakhstan wants to 
stress its nomadic past, even though it also has a lot of oil and natural gas and a lot of wealth. Uh, I'll take this opportunity. This is a shopping mall, but the exterior looks like a yurt, looks like a uh, tent. This is a six-story shopping mall. People are playing chess uh, on, in, the, in the park. See, I told you, I, I mingle myself with people of the same hair color and, <laughs> same, and same age very well. They don't even notice me, they don't object to my presence or my, my uh, things. You see, they don't even notice my presence. <laughs> so, which kind of chess uh, are they playing? Uh, I don't know. I think it's Western chess. Western chess, yeah. Uh, but by the way, uh, the Western chess exactly comes from Indi ancient India and ancient China. And the I don't know about Chinese, ancient uh, China. I know it came from India. And in fact, the checkmate is called, the, means the king is dead. Checkmate is shakmate. Sha means, sha means the sha king. means king. The king, That's yes. the Persian word, actually. Yeah, that's the version word. It's Persian. from India to Persia to the West. Oh, Thank you. And this is uh, the modern part. Uh, Astana has an older part, which is a state, which is a provincial or state <coughs> capital, and the northern part is new. And this is a new part. Ah, I, I chose this one because we were talking about this the other day, remember? This in, in Turkish, means the, the sofra means a well-made dish. In fact, it also can be the name of a restaurant. Proving to you that I have this is the Astana. It's, the name is the same as the center here, right? Yeah. Well, the the name is Anadolu. Anadolu means Anatolia. In Turkish, this means Anatolia. Ah, oh, that's the tent. We go back to now. Go back. We go south to uh, Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan, in fact, were not so far apart. Kazakhstan bor was born out of Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan is an old, Kyrgyz people were old people, they were nomadic. And then Kazakh was ruled by the Mongols, and then there was a war, and those who stayed with the Mongols, still called one name, and then those who decided to leave were called Kazakhs. Kazakh means to leave. I hope I'm right. This is Osh. Osh is in the Fergana Valley. It's not part of the Tianshan part. It's in the Fergana Valley. You can see this is flat. This is quite a sedentary town because this Fergana Valley has always been for 2,000 years, 3,000 years, a sedentary farming city. But in Kyrgyzstan, in 1925, the Russians made the contours of the national borders so such that Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and uh, Uzbekistan all shared a part of the <coughs> Fergana Valley. So a lot of the religious troubles now, a lot of the so-called extremists and so forth uh, were fermenting in Fergana Valley in all three countries. And the three countries couldn't really decide on what to do. Right? But we're talking about connections between China and Turkey. Okay, this is a typical shopping uh, market. Uh, well, this is different parts of Kyrgyz. Kyrgyz is mostly nomadic, but just that little piece near Osh that is uh, sedentary. Uh, this de deserves mentioning. This is probably the earliest uh, Islamic architecture in the eastern part of Central Asia. This was built in the 12th century by the Karakhanids. Karakhanids were the ones that that uh, that Islamized Xinjiang's uh, Hotian and Kashir. Kashir and Hotian were usually, were at that time, were um, Manichi, Manichins, Manich, Manichism, Manichins. And then they were the ones. So these people were first Islamized by the neighbors to the west, and then they go further east until they ended in 15th century in Hamid. 
Bishkek, capital of Kyrgyzstan. This is a typical. <laughs> this is a typical hat of the Kyrgyz. And when you see somebody with a white, tall hat like this, because you cannot tell just from the face what the what ethnic <coughs> or what culture this person is. This definitely is. You see, I. He's a little younger than I, but he's still quite willing to take the picture. You can see his face that he's natural, he's not resisting or embarrassed at all. This is American University in Bishkek. Americans have a university in Beirut, you know, in Cairo, you know. Uh, in Bishkek also there's one. This is the national government, Bishkek. This is. Uh, I am quite proud that I did, did discerned this is a Turkish school. Can you tell from half of the words this, this is a Turkish school? I think it's, I think it's Turkish you say. Is it Atatürk? I cannot tell Atatürk. I can it's this not like a Jalalabad. Yeah, I think Jalalabad. Yeah. Yeah, Jalalabad actually is in Afghanistan. Well, uh, yeah, this is a place in uh, Afghanistan really? as in Jalalabad. Well, this is Jalalabad. But I, I, I noticed this, but these were in my way. But I think it's Lise. Right? It's Lise, the third line. I'm uh, like a detective now. <laughs> now this is Monas. Manas. Manas International Airport and Manas, the other part is the military airport. The Americans are renting it now, but I think after this year the, the Russians will rent it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. It's, it's I'm, amazing. This is true. Uh, but Manas is the epic, of the name of the epic, national epic of uh, Kyrgyz. The Kyrgyz probably originated in Siberia. They came down to drive away the other Turkic groups like the uh, like the Uyghurs and they, 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 drove, they drove them away and the Uyghurs had to leave and then the Uyghurs therefore went to Xinjiang and to Gansu. <coughs> Otherwise they would have lived, they, they lived in today's northern Mongolia. And this is uh, the Nestorian Christians. Nestorian Christians populated all along the Silk Road, along with the um, Manichaeans. So in Chinese, it's Moni Jiao and Jing Jiao. Nestorian is Jing Jiao. Uh, sorry, this is in the National Museum of Kyrgyzstan. Oh, this is a sorry. This is Z. Kujan. 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 Kujan is in Tajikistan, and this is where Kujan is where I think Alexander the Great went the east, eastmost, and that's a bazaar. And ah, oh, I was in front of some. I guess I bought some. I was. Here you are with the opposite sex. <laughs> yeah, but I was interested more in the fruit. In the, in the, in the fruit. It's the apricots there. And this is deep in the mountains because Tajikistan, except a little part from Kutan, most of Tajikistan is in the Pamirs. Ah, this is one person older than I. For sure he was older than I. Uh, but he was nice. People said he's 90. People did tell me he's 90 year, 90 years old. And interestingly, yeah. he's taller than you. Yes, <laughs> taller. And well, he's a Tajik. Mm, he's from this mountain area, but his clothes is so clear, so clean. Zafran, Zarafshan. This is river. Zarafshan River is where the where the uh, Sogdians originated. Sogdians mostly lived in this area. And the, in China, the Hu. During the Tang Dynasty, most of the Hu Ren were Sogdians. And they were the, the <coughs> Li Bai, when, they, when he went to Hu, Hu Qi, it's the Sogdian girls, because Hu Qi, according to Li Bai. And that's, of course, Lenin. 
and that's also in Tajikistan. Dushanbe, <coughs> the capital of Tajikistan. Tajikistan. Uh, well, my wife also found people that she wanted to, or she felt she would be welcome to take a pic to uh, take a picture from. So, this is this hotel we lived in Dushanbe. It used to be run by the French, and it was probably long time ago was uh, 19th century was probably built by some European. And this is a this is a good place for lunch. I had a lunch there. Ashkant. That's Timur. Timur did many bad things, including he did bad things to a Turkey to an Ottoman Sultan. But uh, he is the hero of Uzbekistan. Uh, this is the modern part of. Uh, it's a mirror store. This is a local mirror. It's a, uh, this is a new wedding. Uh, on the street, there were the, the couple were take, the, the photographer was taking pictures, and I was taking I was taking pictures of all, all three. And of course, you have the nun. <coughs> this is a Tashkan in the in the market, different part of Tashkan. Here is an interesting thing, that in Tashkent I had a driver, I had a travel agent, I had a, a somebody working in the restaurant. I got all three of them together to have a picture taken. All four of, uh, uh, four of us have different racial and facial, facial, facial features, but these three are all Uzbeks. So, so in, in terms of Central Asia or even Turkey, you cannot use facial groups to, to, if, to get identity. The identity comes from a, a cultural, social, religious identity. It's not facial. And Chinese, mostly Han, looks more homogeneous than most other people, so therefore Han tend to think this. But these three people, uh, all three of them are 100% Uzbeks, but they have different facial looks. Samarkand is where, where uh, more started and that's I didn't have the time to really ask him I had to I so much wanted to take his picture so I took picture his picture I really should have asked him to have a picture taken with me this is in uh, also in a little street of Samarkand ah this is a pizza group. no 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 my wife took it. We, we went to the pizza store so this we finally decided we have pizza. This is a local pizza girl. Oh, see? This is uh, I forgot. Anyway, it's a shopping area. We bought some tea cups with cottons. Uzbekistan in Russian time, during the Soviet, early Russian and Soviet time, was made of one product country, one single product economy. They only grew cotton. And they need so much water from the cotton, then the Am Amu River was drained and uh, was dammed and drained, dr drained. So now the Amu River almost became empty, and it li very little water goes into the Aral Sea. Amu water usually comes from the, it came from Tenshan and it goes down to Aral, drains into Aral Sea. But now there's very little water left. Uh, this is a carpet place. Uzbekistan, but the the southern Uzbekistan and Afghanistan, northern Afghanistan are very close. The languages they are all, in fact, most of pe the people were uh, Tajiks. They spoke a per Fars. They speak Tur Turkish language. No, sorry, Persian. an Iranian language, Fars. Farsi. Persian language, Farsi. Farsi. <coughs> this is uh, Timur's mausoleum. He died in 19. Uh, he died in 1405 on his way to conquer China, after he had conquered most everything in, in India, in Afghanistan, in, in Anatolia, and so forth. Bukhara, even today, is still mostly a, uh, a Tajik town. People who live in the city are Tajiks. They were more sedentary and more commercial. Uh, but this is the Muslim 
uh, maybe 30 kilometers east of Muhara is the uh, hometown of uh, Nashika Bank. The big Sufi group. Nashika Bank. Sufi school of thought. Yeah. Even in, in China, in Turkey, uh, Nashika Bank is very large. Uh, Yasabi and uh, Nashika Bank are the two. <coughs> Both of them were. This is probably more Turkic. The Yasabi is more, uh, more Persian. But there are big uh, Sufi groups. Uh, some view. And this shows that it's not. This is a still re some re residual of the old sun worship uh, of the, of the Astra, uh, Ari, uh, Zoroastrians. Zoroastrians. Thank you. Zoroastrians. This is a family. Tajik family. This is also probably the earliest Islamic architecture in Central Asia, from the Samanic dynasty, late 10th century, uh, early 10th century, uh, maybe even late 9th century, so about, about 900 AD. There are still some residuals you can see from this one and this one. This is still the ray of sunshine. So even though this is a Islamic uh, architecture, architecture, but the the architects or the the things of decoration, just like in in the blue mosque and so forth, there's still some residuals of all other things. Ah, one more example. Back in your group. Yes, <laughs> I'm I'm in my usual ground and Kiva. Kiva, Kiva is, uh, used to be one of the three ki uh, kinates in today's Uzbekistan, Kiva, Bukhara, and uh, Ko uh, Kohan. This is Amur River. There's still water, but not much now. And this is the desert. It's called the uh, Red Desert, I think. Kizilkum. Kizilkum? Are you offering us a tea? Are you offering us a Ah, yes, that's an offer. Thank you. This is an old uh, this uh, in the Kiva, this is an old uh, Miranet. Uh, and this is uh, a tradition, the cultural uh, the horizon. No, no. The, in Chinese is Hua La Zimbo. Sorry. This minaret was built earlier than the town, I think. It is quite an early min minaret. But this town was built in the 16th century uh, by the Mongol, the, by the, by the uh, Kip Kipchak Mongols. The Kipchak Mongols who ruled all these three. Uzbekistan was totally ruled by the Kipchak Mongols. And they are the they're from a descendant of Badu, and the descendant of Badu is called the uh, Uchipi. And Uchipi means Uzbek. Yeah. Uzbek comes from the name of a, a, a of lineage of his descendants. Harazma, oh, sorry, I cannot tell you. Harazma has a big mathematician whose name is Harazmi. Harazmi, Al Harazmi. Al Harazmi in English is called algorithm. Algorithm comes from this name. And he's 10th century, uh, 10th century from, he was born near the Caspian Sea, on the eastern shore of Caspian Sea, a Persian. Tabriz. Uh, every Turk, every Turk must uh, know or embrace the word Tabriz because Tabriz <laughs> was traded between the Safavid Iran, uh, Safavid Persia, and and Ottomans back and forth several times. <coughs> Today it is Iran, but uh, during Murad III's time, I think it's back and forth. M Murad the third. This is a little mountain view. This is a hotel carved into the mountains. Very nice. Uh, these, uh, this is Bizzad. Bizzad. Bizzad is the big master, grandmaster of miniature painting. He was born in uh, Herat, today's uh, southern Afghanistan, western, western Afghanistan. 
he moved to Tabriz and established his school, the Tabriz School of Miniature Paintings. And Tabriz was also the capital of Irhan, uh, Mongols Irhan. And these are girls from the uh, local, this is a fine arts, school of fine arts. That's why his painting, his uh, sculpture was there. So for, a, for an exception, I had my picture taken with, with a group of young female students. And exceptions prove the rule. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, see, these are people who walk the street. They, they were taking their work yeah. to school. And this is also uh, Tabriz city. Tabriz is a large city. In fact, it's a di very diverse. Uh, this is some amateurs slaughtering a, sh a lamb or a sheep on the street. But it has nothing to do with religious uh, days. It's not a re religious day. It's they just decided they want to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe for dinner. Let's see, he noticed I was taking a picture of him. Right, one of the one of the butchers was another. Tehran. This is a northern Tehran, very nice park with cafes and restaurants and so forth. And Tehran was, of course. Not very much built up by the last shop. It must be Darban, huh? Darban? I don't know. In Tehran. Yeah, near a river. Yes. yes. There's a river that runs through. Yeah, it's called Darban. And this is also northern because it's north of its mountain. So this is also also north part of uh, Tehran. Uh, this is uh, Ferdowsi. Ferdowsi ah, is the poet who was the first Persian poet, who, not first, the po per Persian poet, after having become Islamized, started to recall the Persian story. So it is called the Book of Kings, all the Persian kings. Am I talking over the heads of some people? Okay. Am I talking nonsense to some people? <laughs> oh, the same are, the two are the same thing. <laughs> okay, this is a Persian, no, sorry, a Persian, uh, carpet, Persian rug or carpet uh, place, and I want to point to you, there's a very interested uh, potential customer there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. Isfahan, this is the capital of the, uh, the Safavid, Safavid, Persia. Safavid. Yeah. Uh, there's the bridge with 33 Arches, the 33 arch bridge. This is quite well known. And this is the uh, national martial art of Iran. And they they have a different thing, type way of things, but they still they emphasizes uh, discipline and so forth. And they use drums, but they also read Quran and chant Quran in, in during this time. I think this thing was even before the even existed even in the during the pre-Islamic days, but after Islamization, they changed changed the tune or the uh, or the chanting to Quran. It's called Zuhara, Zuhara, and this is a building in in uh, Isfahan. This is uh, the royal mosque of Isfahan. Very beautiful, very elegant, and nice inside also. A uh, very modern lady in uh, Isfahan. And she knew that I was taking her picture. She was very composed. So women, of course, are, are free to, to smoke, but very few. I have gone through all of Central Asia and even Pakistan and uh, all the way to... Which part of Pakistan, by the way? Uh, which part? Okay. Uh, Lahore. Lahore and also uh, uh, some la uh, in fact where the where the Buddhist art. Oh Texla. 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 Lahore. It's near the capital city, Salamada. Yes. Yes, Texla. This is a miniature painter who made a fortune by charging me very dearly. <laughs> for this. So he was very happy to have his picture taken with me <laughs> along with his work. <laughs> which I still have. Uh, 
this is a, a, a kind of a resting place in the park. Uh, people took, took up, take off their shoes and they rest there. Kung is where Ayatollah Khomeini comes from, and this is the center oh, yes. of Shiite uh, theology, the Shiite study center. It forbids ordinary people to come in, so I can only take a picture from outside. You have to have appointment, and all women have to wear the shador in order to even go close to it. We didn't have time. I look, this is all the our group. Our group, all they all rented the shador. Yazd is the only place in Iran today that has a high, has a concentration of the uh, Zoroastrians, and the, these are Zoroastrians. Uh, This is Yast, but this also is Yast. Zoroastrians are the highest concentration of Zoroastrians today are in Bombay or Mumbai. India. India. Tata, for example, the Indian car called Tata comes from here. Uh, they are supposed to be the, it's the lowest uh, population in the world. They, it's, it's dwindling. The, the Zoroastrians? Yeah, yeah. We have a we have a fire temple here in Hong Kong. Really? You know the Modi here road. in Hong Kong yeah. there's a Zoroastrian yeah. temple. Yeah, yeah, there's yes. many yes. 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 yeah. ah. yes. Modi road and this. Uh, in Chimsa, that's Chimsa, also Chimsa. Zoroast. They call themselves Parsis. Mm. Mm. In Pakistan also have very few. Really? But very. But in popular. Iran there there maybe ten thousand, no more. In Iran. Parsi. Okay, for simply, so I will go very quick, go through very quickly. Uh, that's the different people who pay homage to the king. Uh, this is a 300 years before Xi Jinping. Uh, this is about 2,500 years ago. The Achmenishin uh, Persia, and they have you have uh, Darius. This is a Darius. They pay uh, damage to Darius. Okay, this is the foundation, obviously. Uh, in uh, Mesopotamia, you will see in near Baghdad, near the Mesopotamia, the dresses, the sculptures are very similar to these. So Persian culture and Mesopotamian culture, even though one speaks the uh, uh, language, Persia is Indo-European language, the other one is uh, semantic language, but the culture and the sculpture arts are very similar. This is uh, Shiraz, Shiraz, I think. That's near. Yeah. Oh, Shiraz is here, but I think it's mistaken. Uh, Persepolis doesn't have a town like this. This is Shiraz. And this is. Uh, Wrong, wrong thing, wrong, it shouldn't be here. This is, I show you this yeah, building yeah, already. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was alert. This is a, put in the wrong place. Uh, this is the, I think, the coffin of uh, one of either Hafiz or uh, Sadi. Sadi, who read Orchard. Orchard. I'm not sure which whose coffin is. Both Sadi and, and Hafiz are both um, famous Russian, old Persian poets in the 15th, uh, 14th, 15th century, uh, 13th to 15th century, and they both from, from Shiraz. Shiraz also is well known in Hong Kong because everybody drinks Shiraz wine. <laughs> and Shiraz is a, is a dark skinned grape and that first made into wine in record. So the Shiraz wine is probably the earliest in historical, it may be the earliest, but it's first recorded wine. This is some old decoration. This is a modern coffee, coffee, or cafe in uh, Iran. Ah, this is uh, <laughs> someone who's really too tired to tour. So you are more or less like this. So I just want to show that when you're really too tired, you don't care whether people take a picture of you or not. I do. 
How's everybody, John? This is Baku. Oh, we are moving closer to Turkey. Notice there, there's a plan. Huh? There's still a grand plan here. And this is Baku also. Uh, this is the house that's owned, that was owned by uh, Nobel. The, not the Nobel Prize Nobel, his own brother. In 1908, or in the early 16, uh, 19, 1860-some, they found oil before the, uh, Saudi Arabia, before Kuwait. They found oil. So the Russians, the Americans, the, not Americans less, but British and the Norton and the uh, Swedes invested. So this is a Nobel Prize, no, no, Nobel House. The brother, the own brother of, uh, and also Lord uh, Rothschild. Lord Rothschild also invested. Uh, he has another mention. This is the Nobel mention. There is a Rothschild mention also in Baku. So Baku today is still a very important oil city, and the and then they also own part of the next Caspian Sea under the bed. The Caspian Sea. There's also a lot of natural gas. So Turkmenistan, uh, Azerbaijan, and Iran were all very rich because of this. This is uh, Nizami, that's very clearly, this is uh, uh, someone who wrote five books on love stories and so forth, and the very famous tales like, like uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet in the Islamic world. Layla Majnun. Yeah, Layla and, and also there's Shiran, Shira, there's a shi Shiran, Shiri Farhat. Shiri and Farhat. And Farhat. There are two pairs. Yes. And there are two pairs. Uh, these two pairs are all both from his uh, uh, his uh, five books. Nizami is from Genjav, so he's called Nizami Genjavi. This place is a Genjav. This town is called Genjav. It's, in, it's on the west side of uh, on the west side of uh, Azerbaijan. It's also part of the Silk Road. Now, Leila and uh, Majno is a happy story. One is a happy story, one is not a happy story. And they, they have a lot of Shiri Farhad is not a happy story. Oh. Because his Shiri, father had died. That's right. No, they one is an Armenian, Armenian princess, and then another one is a Persian prince, something. They saw each other in the woods. She was taking a bath, is that it? She was taking a bath, he saw it. <laughs> no? Shiri Farhad actually had a story because his father was a king and he said if you could conquer this, there was a mountain on their way. He said if you could break this sunny mountain and then I will let my daughter to marry you. It. Yes, but at the end he did it. Uh -huh. Great effort. But at the end he. Actually that his name is Hisro. The man's name is Hisro, right? No, the Farhad Shirin. is the man is of the lover and the Shirin is the female. Yes. Yeah, Shirin is princess. Yes, but, princess. but there's a boy. Yes, Farhad. 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 Okay, we go to Armenia. From, from uh, Azerbaijan, we go to Armenia. To, to present day Armenia. Of course, historically, Armenia is, is a different, uh, larger. This is a lady, uh, a pair, uh, a couple, who, in fact, we compared ages, who are a little younger than I. We compared ages. I showed. We, we talked and I showed him my ID card and he told me his age through a translator. Uh, this is a father who won a, chick, uh, a, a cockfight on Sunday. And the grandfather was very happy. The son is also very happy. There's three generations you can see. Yeah. It's called a cockfight. Huh? Uh, in the Philippines, the cockfights took place all the time. It takes, pla takes place all the time. And they have uh, very sharp knives to, to buy. Uh, on the same Sunday, on the same, maybe just two hours apart or one hour apart, I went into a Armenian church, and this is where, in the lake, near the lake, uh, in a little town, the, um, not wedding, it's just the, red, the regular Sunday mass, I see. Armenian church is different from the Catholic church, from different from the Orthodox, any Orthodox church. It is by itself a different kind of church. And these are the 
In fact, this whole place was built by Shah Abbas, 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 King Shah Abbas of Safavid Emperor, Safavid uh, King. But then this, this, of course, was taken by, later on were re recovered by the Armenians. These are the religious people who, uh, who study religion in this place. In Western Europe, you don't see young, so many people go to the seminaries anymore. This is a seminary. Modern music hall. Well, we go to very close now. If we go a little bit, we we'll cross one time. This is Turkey. Yeah, I thought we were going to Turkey from other places. <laughs> <laughs> we no. were so close. Long way. Okay, this is the uh, this is the Caucasus mountain. On the north is Russia. Here I'm in the Georgian side. Uh, this is a town that still has the uh, the. Uh, uh, Remnants are, are the remnants of the uh, Islamic period during the Ottoman rule. This used to, of course, all of this belonged to the Ottoman Empire at, at one time, and not only one time, but for a long time. And this is a seminary. Uh, Stalin didn't study here, but it was uh, same church. Stalin studied in another town. This is near Tbilisi. <coughs> this is where, very close to Tbilisi, an old place, uh, where the two rivers join, the confluence of the river, and that is uh, an old city before <coughs> before Tbilisi was here. Tbilisi, Tbilisi, or not Tbilisi, Tbilisi, the current capital of Georgia, was uh, conquered, not conquered, changed hands 29 <coughs> times in its existence. So you can see how many wars there there have been. Since it was built, the rulers have changed 29 times. This is a small town in Georgia. Uh, we go to a city that's part of Turkey now, Trabzon, near the uh, Black Sea, northeast. Uh, this first, this is an old uh, seminary or old seminary, Greek, Greek seminary, the fourth uh, in the fourth or fifth century, and the paintings were still there, a little bit run, run off, but it's still there. And this is uh, a nearby. It was a deep in the mountains when the monks built their own seminaries, monastery. Now, seminary is not a good word. Monastery, monastery is the right word. Earlier on, those group of people studied in the seminary, but this place, this place was a. Mo was a monastery. Uh, see, my wife also knows how to pick her people to take pictures. This is a group of people, tourists, they were happy. And uh, Aya Sophia. But this is this Aya Sophia is not the one in Istanbul. This is in Tra Trabzon. There's a place during the 14th century, 13th century, after the after the Crusaders came. Uh, many Greek kingdoms were established in uh, in Anatolia. This was one of them. <coughs> and, uh, they also built, at the last thing, they also built a church smaller than the one in Istanbul, much much smaller, but no less uh, significant to their coffers at the time. So they hired many local artisans. Many of the local artisans were Seljuk, Seljuk, Seljuk Turks. Therefore, in that church, in the Hagia Sophia, I will show you right away. Yeah, here. You see, I was ahead of myself. I planned to say this. Here. And the, 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 the stonework had the Seljuk patterns. So they hired whoever who could carve stone. So there were some, uh, some Seljuk, Turk, uh, Seljuk Turks who did the stonework. But this all together is a Greek Orthodox church. Still well kept. Uh, this is a tea. This uh, this is called uh, Chaikor. Chaikor. Chaikor is the national monopoly uh, national monopoly of chai of tea. Chai. Yeah. A very beautiful place and it's very similar to the view that you will see in Switzerland. Uh, 
<laughs> well, I don't have to say much now. I think uh, this is two students who studied in uh, Bilkan University. I was I was doing an academic exchange in Bilkan. <laughs> And this is uh, the museum where you learn all about Hittite and so forth. But afterwards, Kati, Hatti, and so forth. Afterwards, you forget most of it. <laughs> I do you agree? Exactly. It has so much in it. So many. Okay. And this is a. This lady was sent by the Bilkan University. Who she was taking care of me during my uh, during my whole stay. So she took me to the museum. And this is a view from the hilltop, where the museum is. And we go to a city that uh, you and I have talked about, and I, I don't think we, I will have a chance to visit it soon, according to my friends in Beijing. We are talking about secrets now. Uh, this is uh, Cappadocia. Kaiseri is near the natural beauties of, na natural wonders of Cappadocia. Look at the rocks. And they, there are scientific explanations about the erosion and so forth. There are different chemical things during the erosion, so the, the lower part eroded fast, uh, earlier part eroded slower, so therefore it has this shape. It's not somebody who put it on. <laughs> it's clearly uh, explicable. This is an old lady who uh, was doing a very interesting but labor intensive work. She was trying to get the seeds of the pumpkin out and sell the seeds on the uh, And this is a, a meal that we enjoyed in the morning uh, in Cappadocia. We stayed in a former fortress, now turned into a hotel. And um, there were people who do hot air balloon. Unfortunately, some time ago, there was an accident. Uh, we didn't go to the hot air balloon, but many, many people took the hot air balloon. This is Kai City, a large city, I think. Uh, it's, hmm? yeah. it's the window of Turkey. Yes. So, yeah. it's, some people say it's window of Turkey. P people were small businessmen, they were very aggressive, they do many things, and, and they also get famous and rich. <coughs> many of them. Like Jiangsu? Zhejiang. Konya. This is from this you can most people can tell that this is the mausoleum <coughs> of uh, Rumi. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is the swerving dervishes, and you no know, normally you see it in small groups, three or four. We Shang in Shanghai we saw small groups. This is in a very large almost like a stadium type, like Hongkun in, 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 yeah. This can seat up to maybe 6,000, 7,000 people. And then there are maybe a large group of people who perform. It's a new, it's a new building. But they do not allow flash. So I can only use my still picture, no flash. That's why it has an artistic effect. I didn't create this one. But of course, I do. I, I dare not use flash. So. Anatolia, near the uh, Mediterranean. And this is uh, a group of school children, obviously well to, from well-to-do families. Look at their uniform. It's very nice children. I stayed in this hotel. And it's a very nice hotel. Uh, something Pasha. Pasha. Al Pasha. Al Pasha. Al -Pasha. Mm -hmm. This is the view from the shore. Um, this is just a street in uh, Anatolia, it's uh, An Antalya. Um, here, to me, very interesting, it's an old ruined mosque, but it has diff so many layers of foundation from the Greeks, early Greeks, and then Italian, Italians, and then the mosque, and then during the First World War was ruined, and so forth. I think that Italy attacked this place after the First World War. So it has many layers, uh, generations of stories. But not 29 changes. Uh, Tbilisi is still obscure. Izmir. Izmir is where uh, Ataturk got his final victory by driving the Greek uh, 
uh, Greek soldiers or Greek military off the uh, mainland. And that's, uh, but near, this is Ephesus. Our English is called Ephesus. Ephesus, but uh, I don't know the, the Turkish words for this. Is Ephesus. Ephesus. Yeah. But the English is called, called uh, the English nickname is Ephesus. Yes. Anyway, this is a library, an old library. This is the, this is this town or this area used to be during the uh, uh, Hellenized Hellenized period. <coughs> so this is between Greek and Roman empires. So this is the Hellenizing period. Ah, uh, see, to prove again my rule, these people were very comfortable with me. Uh, this is where Hel uh, Mary took refuge one time. So the Pope, several, two, two Catholic popes in recent years had visited this place uh, because it was reputed or it was reported that Mary took refuge. Okay. Bursa, the first capital of uh, Ottoman Empire. But Bursa was also an important town on the Silk Road, near the end of the Silk Road. And there's a caravan survey that, that, that tells the story. Ah, this is an old gentleman who, uh, who wanted to have a picture taken in the, in the Jami. Uh, this is uh, obviously Turkey now. This is the caravan survey. If you read the story, during the 13th, 14th century, there was quite a lot of trade through here, and uh, from all the way from East Asia, from here onwards to Europe. Europe. Yeah. But this is still on the Asian side. <coughs> well, I would just flash through this. But this one I must stop. Because this is where the connection goes deep. Goes deep. These two are sisters who went to a French DC. Oh, I forgot to use this. We went to French Lycée with two Chinese girls, these two. These Chinese girls were born in Xinjiang. In 1949, there was one of them at least. The father who worked for Kuomintang, for the Nationalist, went away when the Communist Army came. And in fact, even before then. Because there, for a while, there was a socialist camp from Xinjiang that took the power. And then there's a joint uh, coalition government, and this their father was the uh, interior minister of Xinjiang, Min Zheng Ting Zhang, Min Zheng Ting Zhang. Anyway, he left and went to Pakistan. He lived in Pakistan for six years, but he had studied in Istanbul under a very famous historian, Turkish historian, Professor Valide Togan. And he wrote to Valide Token and said, I have my family here. I wanted to do something uh, to support them. But in Pakistan, I don't know the language. I don't know much. So can you find me something? And Professor Token, who was a very influential uh, historian in Turkey, who came from a very different, he was not Turkish. He came from uh, Bashkir. Uh, he, during the Russian Revolution, he negotiated with Lenin and decided on the future of the Bashkortostan, east of Tatarstan. Anyway, after Stalin came, he, he left. He took off by, voluntarily to Istanbul and started to teach history and the history of the, uh, of the Tur Turkic peoples. These two young girls, at the age of seven or eight, went to Turkey, Istanbul, and the Professor Togan find a job, created a job, convinced the university, Istanbul University, to create a job. The job is to teach Chinese. No. Okay. So he was the first Chinese teacher in the 20th century, no, oh. during the Karamansari days, I don't know. In the 20th century, Mr. Wong was the first uh, Chinese teacher. Now, way before the Confucius Institute and so forth, these two, of course, they went to French Lycée. So these two learned French, Turkish, and uh, Chinese. Later on, she went to Taiwan for university. 
she studied in Turkey. Uh, so she stayed in Turkey to study. She married a former Chinese, nationalist Chinese diplomat and gave birth to this child, uh, boy. Uh, this boy grew up in Malaysia, was studying in, uh, was studying in Cairo, and, and was visiting his grandmother, whose grandfather died away, died, and then Mr. Wan died. And there are Chinese Muslims. I asked him, her, I said, how do you keep him and your, your other children religious? He says, they can do anything they want. The only thing I require them to do, listen, it's not easy, is to pray five times every day. Okay. They can wear anything they want. They can go anywhere they, with whomever they want, but they have to pray five times. That's her. She has a doctorate degree in sociology and teaches in Malaysia now because she married this diplomat who is also Ma, Mr. Ma, I believe is also a Muslim. And so there's the picture. This is the Chinese, Chinese Turkey connection. Uh, finally I got the connection. Yeah, the connection is very good. Yeah. <laughs> connection. And it was this lady who is Dean of Biomedical Engineering in the United States who knew me as a biomedical engineering professor who first introduced me to Orhan Pamuk. And then later on, we introduced me to her family. So this lady, by way of being in Philadelphia, introduced me to these people. And I, I got to know, I now know Orhan Pamuk, his brother, his sister-in-law, and I also know the whole Wong family. Except at that time, I didn't know him yet. He <laughs> probably has left, in, uh, I'm pretty sure he left uh, Egypt, either because he finished the study or because the uh, situation was intolerable. So, well, <coughs> so my, my story is coming to about an end. This is the younger Togan, the Valide Togan's daughter, whose name is Izenbike Togan. Izenbike Togan wanted to so much to learn about the stories of the Turkics. The father said, my regret is I don't know Chinese. Only through Chinese history will we, will, we, will we really know the whole story about the Turkic peoples in, in, in the past. So she made it her decision, made it her career, sorry, ah, to study Chinese. Chinese. So she translated the Xin Tang Shu and Jiu Tang Shu into Turkish. She's published this big. Xin Tang Shu and Jiu Tang Shu with her own annotations in Turkey because she knows other languages so she ma makes comparisons between the original source and so forth. This is a good friend of mine. Uh, now. Uh, my courage of telling you some of the things is because of her encouragement. She thinks I know enough in her eyes as a foreigner to be able to talk about things between China and Turkey because obviously she's a very big effort, a big big expert on this. She studied in Taiwan first and then she studied her daughter studied in Beijing. So three generations of the connections. This is just to prove that I usually find my prey on the street. Some people um, and see I call them my prey. Well we are exposing ourselves, but uh, not dangerously. <laughs> We're in the. This is this is uh, in Suleiman's uh, hammam. This is uh, uh, just below, next to the Suleiman's mosque. It's marble designed by Sinan. Uh, this is all designed by Sinan and so forth. So we were having a cup of tea, produced in Trabzon, and uh, and this is unfortunately one of the demonstrations. Turkey had many has many demonstrations, even before uh, recently. And this is a very modern part. It's called Istanbul Modern. There's an art modern art near the near uh, Beşiktaş, I think, near Beşiktaş. See that? This is the university I stayed for six months, uh, Boğaziçi University, and uh, this is uh, again something I need to say. Ah, yeah, yeah, and over time by far. 
Uh, I have two hours, right? I have two more hours. Your time stays now. Uh, this is Kennedy, called Kennedy Lodge. Kennedy was the president of Mohavich University. At that time, it was called Roberts College. When you talk about software, you have to say, that's what software was, a soft power. This is what soft power was. An American missionary decided he wants to educate the, the young people in, Tur the, in Turkish young people in Ottoman Empire. Sultan held the land. Sultan had everything. But he wanted to do it. He said, I'm not going to try to preach them to Christianity. I just want to educate them. And during the Crimean War, now I remember the Crimean War, the Cri Crimea is very much in the news. During the Crimean War, an American industrialist who made his fortune in uh, New England came to the Cri Crimea, Crimea and made friends with, uh, not him, with Mr. Robert, a missionary. And he gave Mr. Robert some money. He says, all you have to do is to replicate a New England type of college in architecture because I'm giving you the money. You can hire whoever you want. You can teach whatever contents you have. But built an American college that's called the Roberts College. And then the second president was Kennedy. And after he died, his, his living quarters was turned into a guest house. I stayed in the guest house for some time. I was there in several stints. One time I was given a nicer place, a larger place, and another time I was in guest house. So this is where I stayed. And you see, during the Crimean War, the French, a Catholic country, the British, a Protestant country, helped Turkey, a Muslim country, against Russia, an Orthodox country. So the so-called religious conflicts were not there. And then an American Puritan-based, not the Anglican-based, a Puritan-based American missionary built, during exactly that time, built a college. This is more than 150 years now. And this is why in, in, in Turkey, America is well, well received by most, by, by most people, because that's what software power is. And many people now talk about software in Chinese. But you have to do the things. You have to have people who have the heart and the dedication to do these to project soft power. You cannot just say, we want to have some soft power. I'm speaking to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the modern part of Istanbul. But I want to do this. <laughs> Istanbul has some leftists. Uh, Istanbul is not, is not a place where you can only find one type or another. You have maybe 15 different types. This is one type. And this is uh, cigarette smoking, another type. <laughs> uh, this is Hachi Baba. Uh, this is uh, based on a Persian fiction, of the, the barber, the barber Hachi Baba, but it's actually written by a British who was born in Istanbul. A British diplomat who was born, whose father was a merchant, British merchant. He was born in, in Istanbul, and then he became the um, equivalent to ambassador in uh, in Iran. And he lived in Iran. He knew the Middle Eastern lang uh, language, the languages and the culture so well. He, when he retired, he wrote this book. Many people, after reading the book, says, "Ah, oh, it must be a Persian who wrote the book." And in order to create a name took an English pen name. <laughs> so this is it. And I gave this is because my connection with Turkey started with this. I went to Istanbul to have uh, a visit and also to have a meeting with Orhan Pamuk two years before he got the Nobel Prize. So either, uh, either because I have good taste <laughs> or I have good luck. <laughs> Through the Turkish Council General in Hong Kong. I got to meet him. But when we got to Istanbul, it was so cold and it was a big blister in 19, in the early day, early months, exactly 10 years ago, early days of 19, uh, 2004. So Mr. Parma, Parma was visiting India. His, his Istanbul airport was closed for two days or, or one day. So he, he was off. So he missed our date. 
I don't have his telephone number. I have his fax number. <coughs> so I went to, my wife and I went to Hachibaba to eat because we couldn't, that day we should meet Orhan Pamuk. The next day we should leave. But Orhan Pamuk was not there. So I sent, in the restaurant, I told the, asked the manager, I said, could I use your fax machine to send a fax? I can only send fax, I cannot use the telephone. I don't have a telephone number. So he let me use the fax machine. So I just wrote some papers, Mr. Orham, Mr. Or Pamuk and so forth, and was faxed. And I, of course, gave my own hotel number and telephone number. The next morning, telephone rang. It says, uh, well, I'm back. Uh, you want to meet? I can meet you. I said, all right, we'll meet because it's the following day that we will leave. I went to the hotel that he designated, Divan Hotel in Istanbul. And he says, well, we should eat, I will, uh, he will treat me to dinner, and my wife to dinner. We should eat a simple dinner in Divan Hotel. We said, okay. So we were there. We didn't want to miss this time because we waited all these days. Finally, we got the appointment. So there's the hotel door. We got there half an hour early. My wife was sitting here, I was sitting there, we're just Watch the door intensely. Half hour gone. Appointed appointed time came. No Orhan Pamuk because we know his picture. Where I have read his book, I know his, I know how he looks. Another half an hour, no Orhan Pamuk. Another fifteen minutes, no no Orhan Pamuk. So we said, all right, we should go eat in ourselves. My wife said, let me take a look. Where the restaurant is? So my, I was sitting there, still watching the door. My wife went to the restaurant and came back and said, I think there's a man eating alone. I think he's Orhan Pamuk. I said, how come? So we went there. By the time we both showed up, the eater, the lone diner, also realized, oh, this must be the people I am supposed to meet. But they were so darn late. He came <laughs> from another door. <laughs> the hotel had two doors. He's so familiar with the hotel. He went in another door, waited until the appointed, appointed time maybe waited a few more minutes as an author tend to then he said okay I'm gonna eat so he ate so <laughs> we sat down so the next time the next thing we did is he agreed to visit Hong Kong in, uh, in the late in late uh, 2004 so he came so I established my uh, connection with Turkey in my heart long time ago but in, in deeds with that professor in from Philadelphia and with Orhan, Orhan Pamuk in 2004. So this is the background. I talk, I say a holistic view because I want to show you from the map how China and Turkey is connected. But from now on, I am your prey. You can ask me any <laughs> questions I'm willing to I'm willing to answer until no more than two people stay in this room, including myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. talking about that prey or this prey? This is also prey. <laughs> this is also prey. All right. This is not prey. P R E Y. Not yes, P R E Y. Yes. <laughs> this is a Catholic church. Now I think. Oh, we still have things. Uh, this is the last. In Europe. No, Turkey has three capitals. This is the second capital. But I'm moving from east to west, so I'm going to first capital, third capital, and the second capital. This is uh, the best. I, in my view, probably the best uh, mosque designed by Sinan, the best in Turkey anyway. This is not in Istanbul, but in Edirne. Sinan was 97 years old when he finished this. Uh, this is uh, in name, uh, in, uh, in, in honor of the next king, the next sultan, uh, Selim. This is called Selim, uh, Selimiye. Jami. So this is a, a long prayer called <coughs> P-R-A-Y. Yes, yes. He was, praying, <laughs> well, he was praying alone in this beautiful, uh, ornately uh, decorated mosque. And a group of people drinking coffee. This is now, I just want to end with this. I have to say something for the future. There's a book that says, Next hundred years, 2020 <coughs> China fragments, 2050 global war between U.S., Turkey, Poland, and Japan. So.
Can you make that connection? If you cannot, and then I'll switch off uh, study. It says China in 2020 will collapse. These four, these four countries will have, a, will have no war. Because he says, <laughs> by then Turkey will be this big. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you laugh, but uh, this is a serious guy who is, lives in Texas, who makes uh, a lot of predictions. I just want to yeah. shock you into into senses that prophecies. Hmm? Yeah. Like prophecies. Thank you. <laughs>